goodness. <laughs> This week we're in Fort Myers and we're fishing the inshore waters of Pine Island Sound. This Pine Island Sound area, along with its counterpart, the St. Lucie River on the east coast of Florida, have been in the forefront of the news recently and not good press. Unfortunately, discharges out of Lake Okeechobee have adversely affected these estuaries and we're here today to kind of bring light to that and I kind of want to get a better handle of what's going on here on the west coast of Florida. We're fishing with Weiler Gins. Our plan is to look for some tarpon and then switch things up and hopefully catch a snook or two. All right, first thing this morning, just put in a Puna Rasa, Weiler Gins. What's, what we got a little, we're right here at the mouth of the Gulf, right? So we're gonna fish from the Gulf today, all the way up to the mouth of the Caloosahatchee. Yes, sir. What's our plan? What are we targeting? We're gonna go up the Pine Island Sound right now and try and find some tarpon. Um, then as the tide starts going out, we're gonna head up the mouth of the river and try and find us some snook. All right, so we're sitting here springtime. We definitely have some water quality issues that we're going to talk about today. Um, the Calusa Hatch is really affected by these discharges coming out of Lake Okeechobee. I come from the East Coast, St. Lucie's getting hammered as well. You know, we're still catching fish. Um, we're going to make the best of it, but really, I mean, we can bring to light, you know, kind of what's going on in the area. Yeah, I mean, we'll hopefully be able to find some fish. Um, it might be a little tricky to see them down in the water just because the water's not nearly as clear as it was last year at this time. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's get out there and get on them. Our plan was to load the Triton up with greenies first thing in the morning and look for some tarpon. From there, we were going to head up to Caloosahatchee and target some snook. All right, we got set up here. Where are we? What are we doing? Uh, we're right in the middle of the Pine Island Sound, just kind of drifting along for some tarpon. So this place is notorious for its tarpon fishing. We have Boca Grande just to the north of us, world-renowned tarpon fishery, and this place is really just a giant estuary, right? Oh yeah, no, the Caloosahatchee meets in. We got the Mayaka and the Peace River to the north. It's important, this ecosystem is vital, I and mean, just to the economy, to, to, it brings so much to the area, it's amazing. Just one fishery, I mean, we've probably seen 50 boats out here today. Everybody's kind of doing the same thing, and it's just amazing that to have such a good fishery, this area is incredible, and this, you know, tarpon is sought after. People travel all over the world. Oh, yeah. You know, and s s Southwest Florida is one of the prime spots, right? Oh, yeah, and I mean, they come up, they breed right here in Boca Grand Pass. That's more tarpon in Boca Crass or Boca Grand than just about anywhere at any given time during the summer. All right, well, let's just drift across here and try to put one in the air. Awesome, let's do it. You know, while I really wanted to come over here and kind of bring light to this whole water issue, I know you guys are dealing with the same exact issues out of the Caloosahatchee that we are on the East Coast out of the St. Lucie River. You know, this dumping of Lake Okeechobee has come to the forefront, you know, of uh, people's attention. I think it's a little different this year. You know, we had this wet winter which is normally not you know, when we have these discharges. This year we had a super wet winter from the El Nino, you know, and we're already dumped up to, I think it's 100 billion gallons have been dumped into the Caloosahatchee and the St. Lucie River. So about the negative press in this area, I want to give you a simplified version of a very complex problem. Naturally, Central Florida, the whole Kissimmee Basin flowed into Kissimmee River. From there, it drained into Lake Okeechobee. Out of Lake Okeechobee through the south, it drained into the Everglades and down into Florida Bay. Over the past 100 years, we've changed that plumbing system. We've added dikes and dams and dug canals. We've dried out that whole Everglade region for agricultural and development purposes. Changing that plumbing system and dumping all of that water out the east coast to the St. Lucie River and the west coast to the Caloosahatchee River, we're starting to realize it has some serious long-term effects. But it's really come to a head recently. We're having these major die-offs of seagrasses and oyster beds. Also, we're having fish kills and these major algae blooms. Fortunately, the fishing is really good here still. Um, these fish have fins and they swim. You know, take these tarpon, for instance. They've been migrating to this area for a million years. But it's a long-term problem that we realize now requires immediate action. Or else these fish and these seagrasses may never come back. The solution is simple. We have to fix the plumbing. We have to restore the natural flow of water back into the Everglades, into Florida Bay. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Triton Boats. We take America fishing. Wyler brought us out onto this flat 
and just post it up. You know, we immediately seeing some fish roll around and our technique was gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna throw some greenies out the back on bobbers and just sit there with big circle hooks and hope for the bite. There's one. Oh, it's just a matter of time. Put our time in. He's out here airing out. We sat in there probably an hour, just saw fish rolling. Knew they were here, finally got the bite. Good fish. It's just a waiting game with these tarpon. We saw them rolling. We had the baits there. It's just, they're, they're really picky sometimes, so you just gotta convince one of them to eat. Yeah, we had a couple lines out, three lines out. One gets hit, it turns into a, a circus show. These guys will stretch you out really quick, try to get on top of them. They'll dump a spool before you know it. There's such respect. The guys just reel it in. You don't even have to ask. They, they all know that you're hooked up and they don't want to mess with you. Real, 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 real. Oh my God, it's crazy. You got all these other boats out here. Everybody's nice enough to reel up. There's old Dan over there from Captains to Clean Water, trying to put his clients on him. Good guy. I'm just trying to roll him up over his back. It's not deep water, so he can't really go down. Normally when they jump a bunch, they wear themselves out. This is what this area is really known for. This, you know, this Fort Myers, Sanibel, this whole area through here. You can, you know, we went through several boats, but there's a bunch of captains out here with clients today. And it's a huge destination, huge, you know, bit for the tourism board. Now, this, this people come, travel all over the world to come here to catch these things. He's right there. That's a big fish. Oh yeah, he's about probably 110, 125 pounds. Say 120. Well, how about we snook fish after this, brother? Uh, we can definitely do that. One Def and done on these, man. Oh yeah, no, they'll break your back for sure. You'll, you'll be sore tomorrow. Oh, right in the top of his mouth. How perfect is that hook set? Wow. That's it. That's the one we came for. Oh yeah. Get my hands on her. I got her. You got her? Yep. Careful. That's a solid, look how fat that fish is. It's probably about 140 pounds, I'd say. That is a solid fish. Awesome. God, that troke car was right in the top of her right mouth. Right in the top of the button. I could have used 40 pound fluoro, it wouldn't have mattered. Look at that. She's nice and healthy. There she is. All right. Woo! Nice job, man. Thanks for putting that me on it, brother. Fish. God. <laughs> that was an awesome fish. Oh. I think it was probably about, I'd say 140, 150 pounds. She had yeah. some thick shoulders on her. I don't want another one. <laughs> oh. Topper are one of the most sought after game fish, and this area is the epicenter for it. You have Boca Grande to the north, you have Pine Island Sound, and you gotta understand, these are just migratory fish. They're coming out of the Keys, they're migrating north, and this is a major stopping point for these fish. What do you say? That about whooped my butt? I know. You can only normally get about one of those big ones. That was a good one. Snook time? Oh yeah, let's go do it. Load up some more bait and go snook fish? Yeah, we'll go back to the bridge, uh, throw the net, hopefully just one time, and black out the well and we'll go try and get us a nice snook. All right, I'll kick back and hydrate on the ride. All right, sounds good. They have a really cool snook fishery here. You have the ability to actually sight cast these fish. There's areas in the river where it has white sandy bottoms and I tell you what, these snook stand out. You can go along these shorelines with the trolling motor, pick out the fish you want and cast a bait to them. So what's the plan? We're just gonna work the shoreline? We're gonna work the shoreline. We'll see if we can't see a couple of snooks sitting up on the sand and uh, 
go around, hit some of the shady bushes that are overhangs, and well, that looks snooky. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's get some baits out. Snook fishing in these areas can be combat fishing. These shorelines are lined with mangroves, and the base of these mangroves are razor sharp, so it can pose somewhat of a problem getting these snook out of that area. Oh! Oh, he's around the tree. Get him out, get him out. Nice. Oh, oh no, you don't. They wasn't stopping that fish, not with this tackle. Wow. That was cool. Snook are structure oriented. Whether it's bridges or mangrove shorelines or even docks, you know, they're looking for areas where there's current flow and there's structure. And Weiler had one of these residential canals where these docks were, and he said, let's give it a shot, let's get back up in there and let's look for some snook. Real-time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. There's several different ways to target these snook on these docks. You can throw artificials, you can throw a fly to them, um, but our technique was going to be just pitching live baits way up under there, and once you get the bite, it was game on. Oh, nice snook. That's a stud. That's a good one. There you go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that leader's oh, frayed. Oh, <laughs> that 30 yeah. pound barely held. We dropped that leader way down. I got her. I got her. I bet you that they're a little uh, lighter colored up in Stewart. No, you know what? The same, it's the craziest thing. The St. Lucie and the Calusa Hatchery are very similar, and I think that's why we have the snook that we do. It's this darker body of water, holds the heat better in the wintertime. These snook get up there, way up these residential canals. Same exact thing on the East Coast. You know, it's such a. Awesome snook fishery, both coasts. Oh man, what a great snook. Awesome fish. Nice and fat, just like, just like the ones we see. Oh yeah. Dock fishing for snook can be tricky. You know, you know they're in there, they're deep in there, um, and, but this is, their, this is where they're sleeping. This is their home. It's easy to get a bait in there, it's easy to get the bite, but it's not always easy to get the fish out. It's amazing from one coast to the other how similar it is to what we do. You know, snook-like structure no matter where you go. Docks are one of the best spots for them. Oh yeah, they love the cover to kind of sneak attack their prey and stay cool when it's really hot in the shade. Definitely you can go just about anywhere with snook and catch one under a dock. Structure, structure, structure. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. You thumped it and threw it so far back in there, all you feel is thump. I can't even see it. There's no way you get this out with any some light tackle. This is 50 pound spider wire, 60 pound of fluoro. There he is. Oh, I see him. Oh, you got him. Nice. Not that big one, but it ain't a bad one. God, I threw that under there, man. He thumped it. Right away. That's a good one. Let me go on the other side. Yeah. As soon as it hit the water, boom. Nice. Another solid fish. Oh, yeah. Slot snook. Awesome fish. God, look at that. Not even in his mouth. He came up and turned on it. Caught the side of his mouth. God. Jeez, it is. 
What an ecosystem, man. We got to protect this whole area. This is incredible. Some of the best snook fishing in all of Florida is right here and in Stewart on the other coast. And that's really what's being affected most by this discharge of water. We don't want to lose these guys, man. I want my kids to be able to catch stuff like this when they grow up. Oh yeah. Right there. But it's all about. Send the water south. There he went. There you go. Woo! <laughs> what do you say, think we got the best of it? I think we did pretty well today. Day one was a wrap. I mean, a full day, big tarpon and some snook. We decided, let's get some dinner, get back out there first thing the next morning, and hopefully catch some more fish. Man, that was a pretty good day. Yeah, it turned out pretty well. Not the most fish in the world, but you know, some we had quality. some- Oh yeah, some no, we quality had quality snooks and quality tarpon. And I tell you, this, this area is truly unique. You know, this Caloosahatchee River, the Pine Island Sound, this whole area is so diverse. Every time we come over here, man, we do so well. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by PIN. Let the battle begin. All right, day two, man. We had such a great day yesterday. Caught that big old tarpon in the morning. Got some great snook. We think, uh, stick with the snook fishing today? Yeah, we got a nice incoming tide. Let's go try and get us some bait. Black out the well, and then we'll head up to Kalusahashi and try and catch a couple more snook. All right, man, sounds like a plan. All right. The tide got right, and Wyler said this was a perfect opportunity to do some more sight fishing for snook. We got on one shoreline, and as soon as we got on that shoreline, it was clear this snook were here. He ate it tight to those mangroves. Not too big. Had that pilchard swim right along those mangroves there. I knew it could not stand it. Sweet. This place is an incredible snook fishery. We're seeing a bunch of fish this morning going along these mangroves. We just power pulled down, set up. Probably a little male right there. Dark, you know, in this tannic water. Ready, buddy? We've been giving all the attention to the snook and the tarpon, but I tell you what, this is an estuary. Grass flats and oyster beds equal one thing, prime habitat for redfish. Yeah, yeah red. Nice. Nice red. Talk about a variety of fish. God, what a cool fish. I mean, there's tons of these redfish around here, right? Oh yeah, no, they, uh, they school up in the summertime and in the fall, and just about any nice deep shoreline you can go out, throw a live bait under, and pull one of these awesome fish out. Got the, the tail's a little blue there. It's always nice spots and this is another fish right here that really heavily relies on these healthy sea grasses and a healthy river all right let's let this one go these redfish man they're heavily targeted right i mean it's one of the big reasons people come to this area as well not just the tarpon right oh yeah no they come here for the redfish the pine island sound the grass beds up there are a huge breeding ground for them they thrive out there you can go out there and catch tailing redfish a lot of redfish tournaments in this area. You know? Oh yeah, no, the redfish tournaments are huge. They, uh, I'm sure every weekend you can find a tournament. Just about every weekend, yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? That's what it's all about in here. Switch spots, come on down and I'll go up. My turn at the top. Oh yeah. You know, it, the coolest part too is to sight cast them. I mean, look, we can just see them right here on the bank. You can pick out the one you want. Pretty fish. Well, I mean, it's a nice, healthy Caloosahatchee River snook. Over the past couple days, we've caught snook, redfish, and tarpon, and they were all quality fish. This area has an unbelievable inshore fishery, and it's just as good offshore. Let's call it, man. Two great days of fishing, tarpon, snook, redfish. And this is perfect. I mean, this is absolutely perfect. Great two days. 
This area never disappoints. It's an awesome destination. I appreciate you showing it to me, man. And thanks for inviting me out here. I had a blast. This is great. This is an unbelievable resource. And as users of this resource, it's our responsibility to protect it. Florida's waters and estuaries are being mismanaged. We need to keep this mismanagement at the forefront of our headlines and focus on a resolution for the good of our state. It's simple. We must protect what we love. You want me to take over for a little bit? I could give you a breather. You want some Gatorade? I'm getting to be an old man. <laughs> Back when I was a young boy your age, I'd just <laughs> pull this thing in. Take me to the snook spot, Wyler. I will. This old man is shot. <laughs> How cool was that? I watched him eat it and I sat up on him. Oh, God. You like me,